Just a reminder, you're listening to the summary version of this discussion. Macules and patches are flat. So if you're running your hand over it and you had your eyes closed, you wouldn't be able to tell the rashes there. And a macule is a small lesion, a flat area of altered colour that's less than a centimetre in diameter. And if it's greater than that, if it's a larger area, then we would call that a patch. And now if you run your hands over it and you can feel something there, it's got a raised surface, it's a raised palpable lesion. Similar to a macule, if it's a small one, less than a centimetre in diameter, we call that a papule. And then if it's greater than that, it's a large one, we would call that a nodule. That's often if it's a solid raised sort of isolated, well-circumscribed lesion. If it's more like a patch, so like an area of skin that happens to have a raised edge, but kind of more like a flat lesion, we would call that a plaque. And then maybe the other two that are worth noting are if they're fluid filled, so similar to a papule, um, but if that was filled with fluid, then we would call that a vesicle. And then if it, that's if it's small, so less than a centimetre, and then if it's a large, you know, greater than a centimetre and similar to what, you know, most people, I guess, would call a blister, is often called a, a bulla. Then we can also describe any, any secondary features that the lesion might have. So is it scaling? Is it crusting? Is it ulcerated? Or are there fissures or excoriation or scratch marks with it as well? So the first clinical vignette is a 10-year-old boy with a background of hay fever who presents to you with an intensely pruritic erythematous, excoriated and lichenified rash made up of papules and vesicles, which is distributed bilaterally on the flexural surfaces with associated scale. God, that was a lot of words. <laughs> but that's important, right? Yeah, they're, they're buzzwords. They're definitely it's buzzwords. buzzwords and it's um, language. Yeah, no, they're definitely buzzwords. Right, Jason, I'll take this one. So if we look at some of the key features here, so we've got a, a young boy, a history of ATP, so that hay fever, we, uh, it's pruritic, so it's itchy. We know that because we're being told, but also through the excoriations and the lichenified means that it's likely they've been scratching or rubbing at it. Distributed bilaterally on flexure surfaces and the scale as well, we know that's associated with the epidermis. Mm -hmm. And so I think the most likely thing here is that it's atopic dermatitis. Correct. So we'll move on then to the second clinical vignette. So the second example is a 25-year-old female with a well-defined symmetrical pink and silvery scaly plaques on the extensor surfaces as well as her trunk, and there's also some associated nail changes. So I think that's psoriasis. You're correct. It is psoriasis. Yeah. Good job. Okay, the next clinical vignette, a 30-year-old woman with confluent erythematous plaques across her upper cheeks and bridge of her nose, sparing of the nasolabial folds, as well as a scaly rash on her trunk and upper arms. What do we think this one could be? Well, this is, I, I mean, there's not a, a huge description in the, well, there is a little bit about the type of rash, but I guess it's hard to use first principles here and say what's actually happening. Mm. I mean, obviously mm. there's a lot of things happening, but I think this is one of those ones in the illness group that you have to sort of use a bit of that pattern recognition as well. And one of those buds words being, you know, a rash of the face with sparing of the nasal labial folds, the age of the woman as well. I'd potentially say SLA. Yeah, that's, this one's SLA, yeah. And, yeah, the sparing of the nasolabial folds and, like, the, the sort of young to middle-aged female, they're sort of, like, triggers or buzzwords, I guess. Mm. But I guess that's, that's a male yeah. rash as well. Yeah, a male Same rash time. is the fancy word for it, yep. Okay, so moving on. A five-year-old child with preceding malaise, sore throat and coryza now presents with crops of puritic erythematous macules, papules, vesicles and pustules predominantly on the trunk with some spreading onto the limbs and face. Some of the lesions appear crusted. What do we think this one is? Well, I've had this one before, and that's chicken pox. Yeah, that's right. I think, have you had chicken pox, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, I think most people have had it, I think it, right? Joe's from the time when they used to have chicken pox parties. No, stop. Did you actually? No. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> then the last sort of example I have here is an irritable five-year-old child with a fever, cough, and conjunctivitis, presents with a non-itchy erythematous papular rash, convalescing into macules, which started on the face and has since spread to the trunk and limbs. There are associated small ulcerations on the mucosa within the mouth. I, avo I avoided Bu saying the word bu buckle because I don't know how to say it. Buccal, buccal? Or buccal? I think it's buccal. I thought it was buccal. Oh. Anyways. 
Yeah, that was that was a really long winded way of saying more biliform, wasn't it, Maria? <laughs> but that that's good, Correct. right? Because yeah, 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 um, yeah, form, yeah, we're always correct. told, even yep. if you literally have measles in front of you, don't call it macular papula because you know, you'll be laughed at by the dermatologist on call. I think if it's measles, I think it's allowed. You think so? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Is it the only one that you, you reckon macular papilla rash is okay to say? Maybe drug reactions. I don't know. You try it, Joe. Get back to us. I know, yeah. Okay. Just, for, just for future reference next year. All right. Well, thank you, Maria. So it was measles? Yeah, yeah, it was measles, okay. yeah. Awesome. And Joe, how about we end off with some serious do not miss rashes? Okay. So a 23-year-old male presents. He's got two days of headaches and fever. He's now presenting. He's got a reduced GCS, so an old mental state, widespread pupuric macules and patches. So flattened lesions between a centimetre and greater, and they're pupuric, so they're non-blanching rashes, and they're on his trunk and his limbs. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about this? Is this meningococcal disease? It is, yeah. Okay. Next one, an overweight 50-year-old male mm-hmm. presents with six weeks. He started um, allopurinol for gout. For fa- he's now presenting with flu-like symptoms, fever, lymphadenopathy, and his rash is a diffuse erythematous rash made up of macules and papules, so macular papula, with associated <laughs> colitis and genital involvement. On investigation, there's LFT derangement and e- eosinophilia. Is it dress because of the ears, ears and it feels? It is, yeah. yeah. So dress, uh, we actually haven't covered it completely yet, but is a drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. Uh, a good learning point there, just quickly while we're talking about dress, is the red flags for a scar or, as we said, a severe cutaneous adverse reaction. And that's pain rather than itch, fever, desquamation or blistering, mucous membrane involvement, lab abnormalities, so specifically eosinophilia, LFT derangement and kidney involvement, so res creatinine, and lymphadenopathy. If you see any of those things in association with a macular papular rash, you have to be thinking about scars. Yeah, okay, that's useful. Okay, why don't we do a couple more? Mm-hmm. A 50 year old woman presents, she's got painful, flaccid bullet, which initially she says developed inside her mouth and on her genitals, and has since spread to her trunk and her face. There's many of the lesions have ruptured and they've left behind slow healing, itchy and painful erosions. There's a few non-ruptured lesions left and you go around as a brand new intern who wants to test this out and you're able to pop them all so they're Nikolsky positive. Don't, don't do that, but <laughs> Jason, what do you think this is? I think this is, because it's painful and as you said, Nikolsky positive, I think we have to be thinking about pemphigus vulgaris. Yeah, that's right. And if we just do one last one, so a three-year-old child with two days of fever and irritability, right, is now presenting with a widespread, painful, erythematous rash with fluid-filled bullet, particularly intertriginous, so areas of friction which rupture and peel off in large sheets. Do I take this one? Go for if it. you know it. Well, I mean, I don't. I just don't know if it's... Me- the large sheets thing, it's not like scalded skin... Syndrome, is it? With one more S, yeah. It's staff. Staff, yes. skin syndrome. Yeah, well done. I didn't actually know that one. Nice, awesome, good job. 